Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and I am bringing you new science on fasting today. This one is really cool because so many of you guys have been asking us, can you change gene expression? Can you change genes that have been turned on through fasting? So I dove into the science and I found a new study that was put out in April of 2020 by through Baylor University. And it talks about specific genes that you can upregulate, that you can turn on with fasting, and genes that you don't like that you can turn off with fasting. So I'm gonna show you exactly what fast they did. I'm gonna talk about what type of genes they turned on, what type of genes they turned off. And the science is so exciting. There is so much cool research coming about out about the power of fasting. So please listen all the way through. And then as always, I put these studies in the notes. So go find the notes. This is the kind of stuff you take to your medical doctor and you show them so you can start educating them on just how powerful the body is when you tap into your own intelligence and you take food out of the equation. And in this study, you're gonna see they took one other thing out of the equation that created this type of reaction. As always, I hope this helps. If you are new to my channel, subscribe. If you love this information, please send it out into the world. I am trying to empower people to believe in themselves again, and nothing will make you more impressed with your own inner healing than fasting. So enjoy. Okay, let's dive into a new study that I found out of Baylor University. It was actually published this year, April 2020, but the study was done in 2018, and it is a human study. So to fill you in on how we look at studies in the science world, mouse studies, they're good, but they're not as good as a human study. When we find a human study, that has a lot more validity. If you find a human study with a large grouping of people that they've studied, that is like the gold standard. So this was actually a 14-person study done out of Baylor University, and it was on the genes that get turned on and the genes that get turned off when you intermittent fast. But here's what I'm gonna tell you, this isn't just any intermittent fasting. So stay tuned till the end of this video because I'm gonna tell you exactly what they did. This is a different twist on intermittent fasting. So let's dive into it. Let's start off with this. There were 14 subjects that they looked at, 13 were male and one was female. And they did from the fasting, and I'm gonna give you a little nuance at the end, but the fasting was done from sun up to sundown, so it was done 14 hours. And the important thing to understand is that these genes were turned on and the harmful genes were turned off even if the person didn't lose weight. So I want you to really grab that because so many people come to fasting to lose weight, but there are so many other benefits that if you're not focused on it, you may miss out on all the other cool chemical changes that are happening in your body. So in this particular study, 14 hours of fasting, they found that there was a set of genes that got turned on and a set of genes that got turned off. When the person ate, they didn't regulate what they ate either, which is really fascinating. So here's what genes got turned on. Genes that repair your DNA, genes that improve glucose metabolism. So we're back at this metabolic syndrome where we've got so many people right now that are dealing with diabetes or pre-diabetes or they're overweight and they can't lose weight. And we've got here a study showing that if there is a genetic reason for that, then let's do this particular fast and improve glucose metabolism. They also found that it upregulated genes that helped with lipid metabolism. That's fat metabolism, specifically fatty liver. It gets better though. They found that this particular fast upregulated the immune system. Isn't that what we all want right now? We want this immune system be at, to be at its best. It also rebalanced your circadian clock. So those of you that aren't sleeping well, this particular fast is shown to change the genes that control when you fall asleep and when you wake up and your whole circadian clock. 
Uh, it also showed that it upregu upregulated genes for cognitive function, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, Alzheimer's. So there's a huge piece of this study that has to do with the neuroprotective benefits of this particular 14 hour fast. Then it, but it didn't stop there. I mean, like the genes, I, I, I literally have been going through this study for hours because I'm like, this is unreal. Why do we not have doctors prescribing this particular fast? So it went on to say blood pressure management. Uh, it went on to say cytos cytoskeletal trans uh, remodeling, which has to do with how glucose gets transported in your system. So it, 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 if this gene gets turned on, it helps you with insulin resistance. So, and again, it went on, these are like gene after gene after gene showing that when you do this 14 hour fast, it turns on these genes. Now, but that's not it. Before I go into the stud, to the actual fast, it also down-regulated some of the genes that you don't want. So genes that when they get triggered will give you liver cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, brain cancer, and drug-resistant leukemia. So just stop and think about this for a second. A one 14-hour fast, which you could, from sun up to sundown, and they, they did it every single day for 30 days. So the study was done over a 30-day period. But if you do that every day for 30 days, you can upregulate all these amazing genes that will make you healthier, slow aging down, prevent all these di diseases, and you can downregulate genes for a, a lot of cancers that are ailing people right now, just from fasting. And it's a, it's a human study done in the science. So let's dive in to what did they do? Because I know you're all are like, well, what, what exactly happened in this 14 hours? So it was done sun up to sundown. So they ate a breakfast. I'll actually read to you what they said, that the daily fast began at dawn with a pre-dawn breakfast and it ended at sunset with a dinner for 30 consecutive days. The fast during this time, by the way, was no food, no liquids. So this is a dry fast. We haven't talked a lot about dry fasts on my channel, a little bit. A lot of you love to go into these extreme dry fasts, which I don't recommend, but here we go. We have a 14 hour dry fast that these people did. So no snacks, no food, no liquids, no water, nothing for 14 hours. They had a meal when they got up and they had a meal 14 hours later, but in between that time period, they didn't eat anything. And there was no calorie restriction. So when they ate, they weren't told what to eat. They could eat their normal food. And they, in fact, they were instructed, just eat what you normally do. The only thing we want you to do is to not eat or drink from sunup to sundown, 14 hours. And all of those genes got triggered. So what does that mean for you? I, I come back to this key piece of health that we've got to start using fasting as a tool to heal ourselves. We, hopefully you're waking up to this idea that food is medicine, and I wanna tell you that fasting is also medicine. So we don't always have to reach for something outside of ourselves to heal us. Sometimes we gotta tap into the intelligence inside our bodies. The other thing I, I bring this study, other than it's just a new study and it's really exciting to see that we can have these gene expressions change, I bring this to you because on my channel here, I am focused on teaching you guys how to build a fasting lifestyle. So the goal with fasting isn't just to do the same fast over and over and over again. The goal is to look at I've created what, what I've laid out here on uh, through science is seven different fasts. One of those fasts is a dry fast. And up until this study, I've been telling you guys 12 to 24 hours for dry fasting. I've been talking a lot about how dry fasting can support BDNF, which is like brain fertilizer. I am here to tell you that I'm adding gene expression, turning certain genes on, turning genes off to my dry fasting list. So if you have not dry fasted in a very long time or ever, this would be a good reason to start. So it is 14 hours, 
dry fasting. Now, I know you're probably thinking what I'm thinking, which is, well, what if I just stop eating or drinking at eight o'clock at night and then I don't eat or drink anything till 10 the next morning? That would be 14 hours. Well, it makes sense to me. This study was, they actually let them have a breakfast and then it was 14 hours um, and then they had a dinner. So according to this study, they did sun up to sun down, but it would make logical sense to me that you could also do this with an, using your sleep overnight, no food, no water to stimulate the same effect. So dry fasting, who knew? 14 hours can absolutely change gene expression. I have some other videos coming for you guys. There's a cool study on athletic performance and how there is a certain type of fast that will improve your skeletal muscle um, for uh, performance for endurance type athletes. So stay tuned, I'm gonna be doing that one. And I've got some really cool research on fasting and stimulating anti-aging effects, specifically sirtuins, which are the proteins that slow down the aging process. But today, I wanted you to see the power of a 14 hour dry fast on your genetic expression. So let me know what you think. As always, I really hope this helps. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to believe in the power of fasting. And it's undeniable when you come and look at, the, at what the science is saying. So as always, I hope that helps. <laughs>